All right. So uh, today we're going to do something a little different for those of y'all that watch this channel a lot. Uh, for those of y'all that are new, welcome. Um, I'm not in the shop today. I'm actually sitting in Clayton's house. He's not here. He's in New York, but I'm going to shoot this video. He helped me figure all this out. Uh, we are going to do a, I guess I'd say getting started or super beginner's guide to clearing an SRS module. So if you um, are doing salvage rebuilds or you wrecked your car and set off the airbags and fixed it yourself, whatever it may be, you may have come across a code that you cannot clear with a typical scanner in the airbag module. Um, today, I'm going to give you the beginner's basics of what you do to clear that code. Um, obviously, you can send it off to places like my airbag or safety restore or a bunch of places online. They'll clear it. Um, today, I'm going to show you how you can do it at your house with just a computer and a couple little things that are cheap. So this information is extremely hard to find, and it was pretty tough to figure out. Um, just the getting started part. Um, I'm by no means an expert. You can throw whatever questions you have in the comments, but uh, I've done one module now. Uh, about to do the second one in this video, so that's uh, that's that. So I'm by no means an expert, but I can at least talk to the chips and write to the chips and do that. And that part alone was very very difficult to figure out. So let's see what we got. So what you'll start off with is you need to pull the module out of the vehicle. Um, some vehicles can be done through the CAN bus um, and the adapter that I have here, which I guess I'll show you now, uh, we, we ordered is called the iProg Plus. It's like a Chinese knockoff of the expensive car prog, I do believe, but uh, this thing is actually doing quite, quite well once you figure out how to do it. Um, and it does have an adapter for the CAN bus and some vehicles can be cleared through that, but most of them you're going to have to pull the module out. So this is one out of like a 2003 F-250. I'm not doing that today. It's actually programmed to the microcontroller, not an EEPROM chip. So this one will be fun to learn too. But this one I got from a buddy of mine. You can see this is just the case. This is a 14B321AB out of a 2006 Mustang. And you'll see I have it opened up and out on the desk. Oh, so yeah, so first things first, you gotta be able to identify the chip on the board. Um, it's an EEPROM chip, which I do believe stands for Electronically Erasable Programmable Memory or something along those lines. Uh, you can Google it if you want to know the acronym. Um, those chips can be, so essentially what they do is they, once they're written to, they retain whatever's written there without needing a power source um, until you write, read and write to them again. Uh, manufacturers will tell you that once they're written to, you have to replace the entire module, which is very expensive. Also complete nonsense. The data sheet on the last chip that I did said you could do 8 million read writes before you would face a problem. So that's how many times you can you can clear it and reuse it uh, according to the data sheet of the EEPROM manufacturer. So they just they're just trying to get a bunch of cash out of you if you don't know how to do this. So let's get into it a bit. So we have the iProg programmer. I'll also put links uh, in the description to all of this and up here in the video somewhere. But first things first, we ordered this iProg Plus programmer, and then I also ordered this EEPROM clip from Amazon. So this programmer comes with a bajillion of these adapters. You just kind of got to figure out what's right. What we did was we used this clampy one. Um, it was also, you have to press it really hard to get it to plug in, FYI. We struggled with that for a while. Then we used this double-sided. Uh, you make sure you line up all the pins. The red strip on the clip is obviously the positive. Then this one's labeled pin one, and pin one is labeled on this one down here as well. So we stacked all those up, got those up. Uh, just figure out what adapter works best for you. If you uh, like soldering, you can desolder the chip from the board, place the board just into this individual uh, mechanism and clamp it down, read and write to it that way, unclip it, solder it back to the board. So whatever floats your boat. I like the clip, especially because it took us quite a few tries to get our last one right. So uh, it's a lot faster that way. So once you have that whole thing set up, uh, the next step is going to be locating the EEPROM on the board. I'm gonna suggest Googling. You can also uh, look in the software, which I'll show you momentarily. Um, sometimes the pictures load, sometimes they don't. And that will kind of help you identify it as well. But you're typically looking for an eight pin chip, right? And on this board, you can see we have two of them. On this side, we have no eight pin chips on this back side, right? Uh, you can see this is bent up slightly. That is because I did that because this is the EEPROM down here. I shined a flashlight on it. 
I googled the number on it. That one is indeed the chip. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this clip in here. I had to, because I'm using the clip, I had to bend, flex that up slightly, but we didn't uh, compromise any connection on that, whatever the heck this big cylinder thing is. So I'm gonna get this chip on here. Let me see if I can get the camera to show it. Um, you need to locate which pin on the chip is pin one and make sure the red wire is on that. In this case, it is the top right. There's a little dot on the chip or you can find the diagrams online or possibly in the program we're about to open, the iProg program. When the pictures load, they'll put a little square where the pin one is. But in this one, it is the top right. So there we have it. Everything is set up. This whole adapter connected and connected USB to the computer. Sorry for the mess. I had a bunch of epoxy on the table. Uh, this Vogma vacuum thing. It's a vacuum slash blower, by the way. Freaking fantastic. I'll have a link in below for that. Uh, that thing works wonders if you're doing like electronics and stuff or like to spill like some crumbs in your car, but otherwise it's, it's not the best. Um, but here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up the old computer here, get a screen record going, and I will throw it on the screen now. So what you got here is you got this software called iProg Pro 87. So we will open this up right here. And here's what you got. And this is one of the things that took us absolutely forever to figure out. So this software isn't necessarily an end-all, be-all, you're donezo software like it was pitched and like we thought it was. Um, this is just a read-write software. So this allows you to read EEPROM code into hexadecimal form and to write to EEPROM chips in hexadecimal form. So you get these cool little things if you click on this, right? This is the devices menu, and this will give you all kinds of manufacturers and different airbags uh, module codes. If you can find your exact one in here, it's probably worth trying to run the uh, script down here to erase the crash data. Um, I haven't been able to find either one of these ones verbatim in there. They have the part numbers, the uh, same ones that are on the module. is what they're listed under. So you'll see you have like your four, four and five D, B, here's a B321BE, right? So I know this chip is a 95160 in here, but these front four digits don't match up. So I know it's probably gonna fail. But regardless, you can go through here to check it. And like I said, a lot of times these pictures they should load a picture over here that will show the board, the circuit board, and show you where the chip is and where pin one is. Um, sometimes the pictures don't load, though. It's kind of a janky software. Um, but now that we're in here, the real key here is that you can read and write to the chip. That's what the software does. So up here, this VCC box, this is going to start off at 5 volts. From what we found, 5 volts is too much. It puts too much static in the line, and this took us forever to figure out because the codes are all in like Russian or Chinese or whatever language this is. So we had no idea what it was saying. But essentially, if you have it on 5 volts, we couldn't get anything to read. But if we drop it down to 2.6, right, now we can begin to read. So I'm going to click this green read arrow here, and let's get ourselves a read. Bam! Look at that. So now I'm going to move this window over here doesn't like me to close that we're going to save this file we're going to save this into documents there we go now i want a new folder let's do airbag bag dumps you can see the 2017 escape stuff i was doing over there so that one what I'm doing right now, this is super, super critical. So you see it saving it as a dot binary file. Um, this is very, 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 very important. Make sure you save the original read. So hold on one second. So 06 Mustang crash. Bam. So now I've saved that file. That is super important. We forgot to, to do that. And by forgot, I mean, we had, didn't know how to use the software or what we were doing. So we managed to get a read on a, the first escape, which is the first one I ever did. Then we tried to clear it and write to it. And uh, yeah, we totally, totally uh, botched that. So you'll see here, it says dump okay. Like I said, because it's not exactly perfect, I don't know if it's actually a good read or not, if it's the right one or if you're close enough, it will say crash detected right here instead of dump okay. 
But no matter what, make sure you save that original file because if you lose that, then you may not be able to ever get back. What I ended up doing is getting some other files from online, doing some Googling and building uh, a few pieces out of two different files to make a one that functioned in my escape and then it actually all works perfectly and I got it right because it had some different features but uh, that was pure and utter luck mostly so what can you do here if you have the exact right script you can now try to erase crash right or what you can do is go to a different software like what I have down here this HXD this is a hex editor tool so if I go here I can now go open and I'm in the downloads file. Let's go to documents. We'll go to that file we just read right here. Bam. So this is the code in the airbag module. So FF and hexadecimal is blanks. And you can go through here. You see it looks just like gibberish. So you see this giant long blank section to end the code there so everything at the beginning here and this is all hypothesis i can't conf cannot confirm nor deny this but this module we're pretty sure it's clean i'm just reading it just to demonstrate uh and they also kind of wanted me to double check in a rect file you'll get data like this a little cleared section and then this part right here where it's all cleared right this will all have a bunch of data in it too with just a small section that's empty and if that's the case you have to figure out if you're doing it in the hex editor you have to figure out what you need to blank out um to go with it but like i said this i'm real new to this this is all uh just to demonstrate how to read and write to the chips i'm not telling you how to clear them but we'll do a prime example here right so now that we're in this uh HXD, sorry, this may look a little weird. I just did some some nonsense, so I'm having to start over here. Like I said, I'm very, very new to this. I have no idea what I'm actually doing So uh, when it comes to the editing of these things. But what you'll see here is what I'm highlighting. This is FF. This is uh, the generic zero for hexadecimal code. So all this information up top, all this gibberish you see here is data on the chip. Um, I'm pretty sure this one doesn't actually have a collision stored on it. They weren't sure, um, and they, I just needed something to demo, so my buddy gave me this. He wasn't 100% sure if it deployed the airbags or not. But you see all these giant area of blank I just copied? That would normally have more information in it, so I'm pretty sure this one's already clear. But as a demo of how to read and write to the chip, which is what this video is all about, I'm going to show you real quick. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to blank out this whole... This whole uh, this whole chip here, let me go right click, paste right, boom. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna blank out all the information that was on this chip originally, and then I'll upload it to the chip and then reread it. So you see how it's all FFs now? There's no more of that information. So we will file, save as, and we will do Mustang crash blank blank demo sweet so now we've made this blank demo let's go back over to iprog so in your case you'll be trying to clean out your crash data right but once you get there and you think you have a file you want to try you're still hooked up to the chip on the board none of that's changed now you go over to the yellow right no nope, i'm sorry the red right button um except let me open our file i'm sorry so we'll open this file, which is which one? Oh, this is 17 escape, I'm sorry. You go to documents, airbag dumps, blank demo right here. So let's open this one up. Now we're going to click the write button. So now it's gonna load. It takes longer to write than it does to read, but check this out. So once that is finished, bam, now we'll click the verify button. Boom. So now it verified it, it said, yep, we wrote it good. So we will take a read. 
here's our new read and now you see that it's changed from OK dump to invalid dump that is because it's seeing a completely blank chip so now it's file save this file as a demo reread all right now we'll go back over to our hex editor here file open demo reread and you'll see now that we've opened that one it is completely blank so it wrote to it it blanked out the entire thing wham bam done so um, the actual clearing of the data, like I said, you do some Googling. Uh, maybe your module is listed in that program and it'll work. Just make sure you keep a copy of the original file on hand for sure. But this is the basics of how to set everything up, how to connect to the chip, how to read and write to it, which is really what this program is. And just figuring that part out uh, had a good deal of confusion for me and my buddy Clayton and he is a network engineer so the fact that that was hard for him uh, that tells you how ridiculous it was but we're gonna go ahead and put back the original like I said it didn't look to me like it had any crash data on it so we'll put it back in the car once they get it done and verify that but I'm quite confident in that um, you'll see here though I'm just putting the old file back on we wrote it there we go now when I read it it will say dump okay boom we have read, written, we have read and written to this chip successfully multiple times now, and you can do it, like I said, a whole bunch of times. So don't be don't be afraid to mess it up, um, even if it says so. Like on my 2017 escape, I did I messed up some of the code at one point, and it said memory corrupted. As long as you can talk to the chip and read and write to the chip, you're all right. You can just keep trying, man. It's not that big of a deal. And uh, like I said, information is very, very hard to find. So hopefully this helps somebody out. But that's the gist of the setup. That's how we got it communicating. The big, big deals here were make sure that you drop the voltage over up here in this corner, the VCC voltage to 2.6 while you're talking. And this clip that I have attached to this was a godsend because I was in and out of the vehicle with that escape time and time again that's mostly because we lost the original read but uh needless to say yeah like yeah it took us a lot of attempts so again you can maybe find a script you can maybe find a clean file to just upload online um, i'll tell you what i did though real quick one last last tidbit so in the hex editor here on the newer ones right let me go just reopen that crash one real quick just so it has some sort of information but on newer vehicles that have VIN numbers coded to the module, you will find the VIN number over here in the decoded text. It'll be clear as day when you're scrolling down through it. Um, actually, let me go grab my escape one because that will make more sense. Hang tight. We're going to open the escape file. So here, so here's a more modern uh, RCM or control module, right? Oop. So we're going to go down past all this gibberish and this big area blank right here is what ended up getting fixed so that all a lot of that had information in it but you'll see here this is a VIN number off of the vehicle and you'll see it three times in a row so that can be changed by just doing a search and replace here so search the VIN number on the file you downloaded replace it with your VIN number and do a replace all. So if you find a file online that you can download or somebody gives to you, you can go replace it in this hex editor and then go upload it. So that's good. Um, but yeah, hopefully this helps somebody out. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe. If it did, I'm going to make more airbag videos as I learn more um, to try and help folks out because I hate how hard it is to find this information.